Hello, my name is Lucas, this is a bit of lit, and I'm here at the end of New World's November to talk about a novel that I bought a couple weeks or months ago uh, that I thought would be really good, uh, that I'd seen for quite some time. Uh, and it is Vagabonds, uh, written by Hao Jingfang and uh, translated by Ken Liu, uh, who is a fantastic translator and has worked on a lot of great books by Liu Cixing. Um This won the 2021 Arthur C. Clarke Award for Book of the Year. And um, is set in the 22nd century where um, Earth has colonized Mars. And in about 40 years or so, uh, time, I believe 2069, if I recall, um, Mars and Earth have a war, uh, and this is set a hundred years after that, where a delegation of people, one of them being the granddaughter of the consul of Mars, Yuling, uh, has been sent to Earth for five years and has finally come back, and there are some uh, on the ship Mars, I guess it's Mars Earth, <laughs> and uh, there is a negotiation going on about uh, trade for technology and resources. Uh, Earth wants Mars's technology because they have structured their society in a kind of communist or socialist way where all needs are met, uh, but resources are tight, so um, they, they have found a way, a very rigid structure, mind you, uh, found a way of uh, making sure everybody's needs are met, but uh, they need to sort of, for, for more of the resources, for their works, uh, or their art, because all people have a sort of freedom to create. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's open in the central archives and uh, accessible to all in the central archives and that kind of thing and could lead to more funding a uh, higher percentage of funding um, and there's some really interesting ideas about so uh, like social science kind of ideas about how this place would work and then of course Earth is a uh, individualistic capitalist hellhole <laughs> with a lot of freedom and, uh, you know, this author is Chinese. In one way, it would be easy to just assume, oh, it's some kind of parallel. Uh, you know, Earth is America and Mars is China, but I don't really, I don't really think that quite fits. Um, yeah, I don't think it would quite fit that description. I think that would be too simplistic. Um, but... Liu Ying, I suppose, is the main character, if, if there is one. Um, basically, this is uh, what this says at the end, is that Liu Ying must discover the truth amid a web of lies spun by both sides, Earth and Mars, because uh, the government and people of Earth believe that Mars is a dictatorship um, ruled by Liu Ying's grandfather. Uh, but it's not quite so simple. Likewise, she believes that she, uh, she grew up, she believed she grew up in a utopia, a perfect place. Uh, however, the rigid structures and so on and so forth uh, lead to some, lead to a great reckoning for her uh, in, when she returns. Uh, because she's lived her life on Earth and it was a hard adjustment for her. But now she's coming back, and now she feels like she doesn't fit in either place. Uh, and as it says, Liu Ying must discover the truth amid a web of lies spun by both sides, or face the destruction of everything she's ever loved. Uh, <laughs> because at the beginning of this story, it tells you that... Uh, it was the year 21... Okay, I got it wrong. It was the year 2190 on Earth, the year 40 on Mars, but more importantly, 
I could find the exact passage at the end of the very first prologue. This is the tale of the fall of the last utopia, which is on page two of this book and makes it like, oh yeah, I'm excited. There's a lot of interesting criticism and ideas of uh, going around about this, feeling like you you don't belong um, when you've been a place in a place for so long. I can imagine if I win, I mean, when I go back to America, I'm going to feel, <laughs> why do I have to drive everywhere? Uh, and this kind of thing, but, um, yeah, the premise at the beginning and from the back makes it sound like it's going to be really, really exciting, but it is much more of a um, kind of think piece. Uh, it's very slow paced. Uh, and it's, yeah, really reckoning with these ideas of um, discovering the ugly side of where you're from and, and your, or what you're told and uh, lies covering those things that you're told up uh, and what the truth is behind that and, uh, yeah, just the shift in ideology uh, sort of and, um, you know, the need for communication. There is this kind of looming threat of war, which is kind of done away with <laughs> in the middle of the book, uh, which is when I personally feel like it, I was fairly engaged and still ready to go uh, until about halfway through. And then everything from there just felt a little too slow paced for me, especially, I mean, there was lots of other tension and dramas uh, coming up, but they feel kind of like they would have benefited greatly if the book was 100, 150 pages shorter <laughs> um, instead of a 645 page behemoth. Um, yeah, and the book didn't quite work for me because I had high, I didn't know anything about it. And then the first two pages really sold it for me. And the first few chapters really made me think like really, some really exciting things are gonna happen and there's gonna be, maybe there's gonna be a war. And even if there wasn't, like, there's gonna be some really cool ideas. Uh, and there were, but yeah, it just definitely felt a little fluffy, a little padded out maybe, uh, but there was some, interesting um, critiques of these two different ideologies, a very free uh, ideology and a very rigid, structured ideology, uh, written by someone who's an economist. <laughs> uh, and yeah, it was all right. And then it just went on too long. That's my thoughts. And that is the end of this year's New World's November for me. Didn't read the books that I meant to, but I can always read them next month anyway. Thank you.